out with a new piece on Ukraine's, quote, thorny history with Nazi imagery in its military. Quote, troops' use of patches bearing Nazi emblems risks fueling Russian propaganda and spreading imagery that the West has spent a half century trying to eliminate. Journalist Glenn Greenwald commented on the piece, tweeting, amazing article from New York Times about the rather uncomfortable fact that photos of Ukrainian soldiers and leading battalions so often include Nazi symbols and flags. For a decade, the Western press warned Ukraine's fighters were dominated by Nazi units. Yeah, this article exploded on the internet yesterday because, frankly, as we well know, for months, viral image after viral image has been circulating of Ukrainian soldiers with various kinds of Nazi symbols on them. There was the incident where um, uh, John Stewart was awarding a medal, medal to someone who ended up having Nazi tat tattoos. It's the, the incidents of this happening in high-profile photos on the front cover of these major newspapers, et cetera, is so bizarre that it leads one to the conclusion that you can't escape that this is not some incidental, accidental, small, marginal number of people in this military force who are openly touting Nazi ideology. But this article feels like the New York Times is finally forced to confront that reality after having published so many <laughs> images of Nazis themselves. And instead of taking it head on, the article itself reads as apologia for what it's trying to describe. Yeah. So people have been ripping this apart. They they um, make they say, well, the Nazi symbol, the swastika symbol was once a Hindu symbol. So maybe these are just Ukrainian Hindus. <laughs> I guess it's supposed to be the implication. They raise the the um, Confederate flag saying, well, so like just like some people in the South say the Confederate flag is just about their mm -hmm. pride in history. Maybe right. some people think that and this swastika. And U.S. liberals usually call BS on that argument. Exactly. In every other context, they say, no, 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 no. We don't care. You know why your your tw whatever twisted logic or rationale you've come up with to defend this imagery. We know what it actually stands for. Um, <laughs> one would think that's the same thing with Nazi imagery. Nope. But because again, liberal Democrat mainstream type people are so bought into the Ukrainian war effort against Russia, you have to look the other way or pretend it means something else and or all that, or, or apply all sorts of greater contextualizing that never happens in in cases of hate crimes and you know graffiti of like hate symbols in the U.S. context. No, that's always that's the worst thing you can do. There's no further um, exploration of what it means or well, think of the context. The, the media never does that. Yeah, and the reason is because Putin has been saying that part of the project is to denazify Ukraine and to acknowledge that there are a non-trivial number of Nazis in Ukraine is to them validating Putin's narrative. Now, I would argue that everywhere needs to be denazified. That doesn't necessarily right. mean it justifies an not invasion. Not an invasion at right. some point. But no. I'm not going to put myself in the position as arguing in favor of notification. Like, mm -hmm. it, so another thing the article does is use the fact of Zelensky being Jewish as a counter argument. You know, how, how, how could, how could his bodyguards be Jewish? How could the people surrounding him wearing swastikas and other kinds of uh, Nazi paraphernalia be, be, be Nazis if they're protecting someone who's Jewish? You don't need a PhD to realize that those things can exist in the same time. They try to explain there. There's something symbols called a uh, totenkopfs, which were apparently used by Nazi con concentration camp guards, um, and they they say, well, it's also a symbol that's used by a musical band. So that's neither here nor there. Admitting that it is a Nazi musical band, they say, you know, it was impossible to make an inference about the wearer or the Ukrainian army based on this patch. That's that was from the Anti Defamation League. Yeah. Uh, League's uh, Jake really Hyman. softballing. You know, the, I mean, the Anti Defamation <laughs> League. I have never <laughs> seen. They've never met a hate symbol that they would not eagerly denounce before. I'm just saying. It, it, except now, right? There, it's like this plain running. A I mean, cover. Th th this is a group that I remember their their surveys and their studies about how because of Trump. Uh, hate, anti-Semitic hate is rampant in American schools. And they had this very, um, the methodology of it, not at all persuasive to me when I looked into it a, a little bit to suggest that anti-Semitic hate bullying incidents were 
rampantly increasing throughout American schools and were explicitly due to Donald Trump's rhetoric. Hmm. Um, and now they're saying that there's an indifference to Yeah, now they're saying, well, it could be offensive to some people. Here, yeah, yeah, Jewish people. Yeah, well, <laughs> the Anti-Defamation, that's what's so toxic about this. The Anti-Defamation League, which ostensibly should be the ones calling out legitimate instances mm -hmm. of anti-Semitism and Nazi ideology like this, are in fact running cover for it because of this broader political project. So in this other paragraph, um, the Times writes, in November, during a meeting with Times reporters near the front line, a Ukrainian press officer wore a Totenkamp variation made by a company called R3ICH, pronounced Reich. He said he did not believe the patch was affiliated with the Nazis. The patch made by the organization called Reich. Oh, I'm sure there's a Reich easy was a explanation for it. I mean, you know, <laughs> who among us hasn't? And, and, the, and the article just credulously yeah. takes these statements and just runs with it. There's offers no pushback whatsoever. Moreover, it, it you know, people have pointed out that there's a way that they try to recharacterize um, the Soviet Union's role in defeating the Nazis, suffering more casualties of war than anybody else, as somehow an ambivalent position or something that they shouldn't get all the credit in the world for. Um, and do what some people are describing as pro pro propagating their own kind of Nazi uh, propaganda by saying that when the Nazis invaded Ukraine, then part of the Soviet Union, many Ukrainians saw them as liberators. I mean, it's like really, mm -hmm. really galaxy brain well, stuff. Right. <laughs> this should be a reminder that, look, we in other parts of the world, in Europe, they they have been fighting people, Russians, Germans, Ukrainians, all the peoples of Eastern Europe have been, Europe all over the entire continent, warfare for hundreds and hundreds of years. There are ethnic conflicts. Sure. There are, there were used to be religious based conflicts. There are conflicts going back centuries that if family conflict, things that people still feel something for that we don't necessarily understand because we're somewhere else and they're somewhere else and we can't, you know, force how we feel about things on everyone else. There are conflicts that we can't, that just like, just can't be solved necessarily easily by the U.S. just saying, you got to stop hating each other, you got to stop fighting. And it's complicated because there are people who are unsavory. I mean, we encounter this in the Middle East. People who are unsavory to us for a lot of reasons, but are they the good guys in this conflict because we hate these people more? And then where does that get us when we arm them and then somebody else ends up with the weapons? And it, it just does, it doesn't turn out well because we should try generally to mind our own business in a foreign policy context is actually what the American people support. Sure, but the, what's happening here is that the New York Times is doing PR, not neutrally saying, hey, maybe we should help Ukraine, but there's some bad folks in the mix, but we should help them on a general, broader general principle. It's running cover for them. I mean, people who are more knowledgeable are pointing out that there are all of these non-ambiguous acts, the reburying of these Galazin um, soldiers, a these uh, soldiers from a, what was apparently a, a, a notorious Nazi unit. A ceremony was done by the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to rebury them just a couple of years ago. It's, these symbols mm -hmm. abound. Um, and these, uh, these folks are being characterized in the book, uh, sorry, in the article, as historic, you know, as historical groups, some of which may have been Nazis, but that wasn't their main bag. And over and over again in the in the article, there is this very explicit effort to downplay, acknowledge, but downplay what so many people in social media and in independent news have been reporting on as a real problem for years. And frankly, I think the effect is, the effect is that it makes. Ukraine look worse than if the paper had just acknowledged the reality of what's going on in the country at the top. Because mm -hmm. now it looks like a, a, a cover job, and the implication is it's so much worse than just the people who are showing up with the odd badge or tattoo or what have you. Mm -hmm. And again, it's worth noting just the sheer number of incidents that are, are cataloged in the context of this article, much less beyond. Right. It, it's... Uh... <laughs> It clearly goes beyond, like, just there were just three people in three photos that got photographed with Nazi regalia. It, it, the, um, it seems like it's a more significant aspect of the Ukrainian army than uh, readers of the New York Times have previously been led to believe. Yeah. So I am glad to see a little bit of acknowledgement, even if it's kind of, uh, I, I agree with 
your criticisms of how they framed it. But I think even this article is going to be something of a revelation for a lot of people who only get their information from the New York Times. And be like, what? There's Nazis in the Ukrainian army? Yeah, what is well, that's that? a Putin talking been, point up until yeah. this time. And right. a friend of mine noted that a lot of the Ukraine articles don't have comments on them in the New York Times because it was part of like an ongoing news update section that didn't allow oh, comments. This article does allow comments. And when we talked about it yesterday, he pointed out that there were hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very active comment section of people expressing but frustrations. I always tell you, I always tell you not to read the comments, Brianna. <laughs> well, I will definitely be reading the comments on this <laughs> article. Um,